intro session for our upcoming feature boot camp, which is going to be eight weeks to write a full first draft of a feature. You're going to have a little extra time because we have the holidays that are going to kind of be in the middle of this. So this is the, the session of the year where you will have those extra weeks to get everything just right, <clears throat> or at least to catch up on work that you've missed. The goal is not to write something perfect in the class, but to learn strategies for organizing a feature script and learn how to outline and learn how to execute on that outline within a reasonable time frame. So um, we are going to learn, it's not, we're not how to write a perfect movie, but just how to write a movie in this class. Um, so before we start, make sure to just check your microphone settings. This should, you should remain muted most of the time. You can find that small gray microphone icon in the bottom left corner of your Discord screen. You can click that to mute your mic and unmute yourself if you're called upon in class. There will be lots of opportunities for you to be called upon and to speak about your idea at length. Um, we like to ask lots of questions and help you work out your logline during these first few sessions, so we can provide some of that initial feedback if you're just wondering, how do I start to shape this into a proper movie idea? But make sure to just check that small gray microphone icon and make sure that's on for the most part. So um, what is Script Camp? We're a screenwriting community, which is part of Skill Camp. <coughs> um, and in this server, we offer many free and low-cost classes to um, learn how to go from idea to first draft to a polished script. Um, we have these free classes, events, and workshops, and some are for our supporting members, which are going to include things like the full boot camps, the writer's labs, advanced labs, and um, other events like that. So this right now is the free intro session of our boot camp. So if you want to continue past this, make sure to sign up and become a supporting member. Um, Skill Camp is our nonprofit organization. We have free and low cost classes to help you learn skills and reach your life goals. Um, Script Camp was our first and is our biggest server so far, but we're adding new ones um, and we have new classes starting up all the time. So make sure to come by and join Film Camp, Creator Camp, Tune Camp for animation, Word Camp for writing novels, Design Camp for um, graphic design, Lingo Camp for learning languages, and Code Camp for learning how to program. And we just added um, a whole course for that that's coming up in January, Coding for Beginners. So if you become a supporting member, you, can, you should donate and you will get access to all boot camps and labs. You can donate $29 a month with the yearly discount to get a yearly subscription. You can also volunteer if you know a skill or language you'd like to teach, um, then contact Nacho or me. And you can tell your friends um, to refer somebody. You will get a free month of Unlimited plus a month of Arc Studio Pro, which is a great screenwriting software. Um, so here's a bit about me. I have been writing full-length scripts for 11, 12 years now. Moved to LA in 2015 with no connections. Got signed for the first time by my first manager in 2017 after I placed in the top 10 of the Launchpad contest. From then on, I went to place in the Nickel semifinals um, and quarterfinals, and I wrote an episode of Shudder's Creep Show back in 2019. I've been featured in a couple lists that you can see here, and I have a thriller script that's set up with DJ2 Entertainment currently, which is the producers of the Sonic the Hedgehog movies in Hollywood at the moment. I teach the screenwriting boot camps and weekly writer's lab. I also teach novel boot camp over on the novel writing server called Word Camp. And I'll be teaching intro to German um, coming up on Lingo Camp. Um, and, um, oh, and just if you are not aware, our, our co-founder is Nacho, who is also in the server and runs many events as well. Um, so here's what's new and what's coming up. We have plenty of things going on right now. Like I mentioned, I'm teaching feature, TV, and novels. Um, new novel classes will start in February, but for the moment, the sessions that we're currently running are features, which is going to start. This is the intro class, that, but the first official meeting is going to be January 8th. So this is to help you get ready and prepared for that class by figuring out your exact logline and um, helping you to shape your idea more and more over the holidays as you start to refine what this actually is and what you're making. Pilot Bootcamp, new TV Pilot Bootcamp starts Friday, December 16th. That's coming up in about two weeks. And that's gonna be Fridays from six to eight. All these times are in Pacific time. We have Script Analysis Bootcamp that Nacho runs Thursdays at six. You, you, you should attend if you wanna learn how to break down scripts, learn what's working about them, <coughs> figure out the structure, mark out all the act breaks, and um, just analyze the dramatic work. We have new sessions of cinematography lighting and home studio lighting on Film Camp and Creator Camp. That's going to be December 17th. Animation classes Tuesdays at 3 over on Toon Camp. And we are starting character design on um, Toon Camp in December as well. So plenty of classes there. Um, if you're just joining us, welcome. Thanks for coming in. Uh, if you would like, you can click next to my name in the Discord channel where it says the word live. And you can watch our video slideshow presentation um, along with my 
just you d if you want to watch that as well as hear my voice. So make sure to look on the left side of your Discord screen. You'll find uh, a channel called Classroom. That's what we're in right now. So click where it says the red bubble that says live next to my name and you can watch along with our slideshow. Um, plenty of stuff coming up. You can see a bunch of other events. We have a Halloween contest award ceremony December 10th with an industry guest, Max Perry, writer of the Sasha Baron Cohen series The Spy on Netflix. Um, he's going to give comments on the winners and we're going to do table reads of the winning short horror scripts. That's going to be December 10th, a little, a, maybe about an hour long for that um, event there. That's coming up just next week on this upcoming Saturday. Um, we have plenty of clubs, Fantasy Club, we have Horror Workshop, um, and uh, multiple comedy groups as well that meet every week. We have Table Reads, Sundays from 2 to 5, that's later today. We have Script Swaps, Tuesdays at 5, and another session on Wednesdays at 11, so you can come in with a script that you've written. Trade with somebody else and exchange feedback with them. It's the best way to get um, really organized and um, on-time feedback from somebody by giving them feedback yourself. And Fantasy Workshop is later today from at 5 o'clock. That's run by our um, uh, moderator, Amanda. So, plenty of things to check out on all of our different servers uh, on Script Camp alone. You could come to three classes or four classes a week if you really wanted to. Um, we usually recommend you try to pick one boot camp to really focus on, but as a member, you have um, full access to check out the other classes. You don't have to sign up for them in advance. If you're a member, you can just show up and check out what they're all about. You don't have to follow along with the program. You can just audit the class if you want to. And you'll also have access as a member to our video library, which includes videos of all the previous classes. So what's the boot camps? What is a boot camp? We are, these are courses that take you from idea to first draft. Um, or you can bring a rewrite project if you're doing a substantial rewrite and thus kind of move it to the next draft. But um, you'll want to make sure to get notes and feedback on that beforehand using our many different options that we mentioned, such as the uh, script swaps or the table reads or things like that. <coughs> um, <coughs> So uh, what else? Um, oh, so here we are. Uh, yeah, so step-by-step, step, two, two hour weekly classes with me. We run eight weeks for the feature, six weeks for the TV pilot. In the past, we've run shorter boot camps for things like a short film or for pitching strategies. Those have been about four weeks long. And then 12 weeks for the novel boot camp. So that's our longest one. I'm hearing a little bit of um, feedback from somebody's mic. If you could just make sure to click that small gray mute button in the bottom left corner of your screen, you'll find a small microphone that you can use to Meet yourself, thank you. Um, okay, so feature bootcamp schedule. Let's look at what this course has to offer. Um, this is week zero. This is a free intro session that's intended to give you an overview of the entire course and to maybe give you that preliminary feedback on your idea. If you just have like a piece of an idea or you have a few that you're trying to choose between, we can try to give you that first feedback today and help you start to shape that into something that is going to be easier to work with moving forward. Excuse me. <coughs> um, <coughs> so next week will be, or sorry, next week. The first week of this class is January 8th, and that's going to focus on why this story, like you're going to try to re settle on a story idea if you have several that you've chosen or that you're trying to choose between. You're really going to want to pick one to work on for the class, and we're going to work on filling out that sketchbook, which is going to be the uh, a sort of unsorted uh, aggregation of all of your notes research material and um, early ideas for the project. So you'll have all of the holidays to be working on that. And we can maybe take a look at sketchbooks during week one. Week two is outlining. So we're gonna look at a broad overview of the entire story with the event, the major events in the proper order that they must go in. Week three is gonna be an expansion of that outline into what we call scene cards, which is a full paragraph for every scene with the idea that we should know what's gonna happen on every page more or less before we even write a single page of the script. We start the script on week four which is January 29th, and that's where you're going to be writing about 20 to 25 pages a week, meaning about four or five pages per weekday, if you're just writing on weekdays. Um, and from then on, you're going to try to keep that pace up all the way until the end and finish that first draft by uh, March 5th. So um, this runs from uh, beginning of January to beginning of March, eight weeks to write a full draft of the feature film. You're, it's okay if you have any skill level, this is open to beginners and more experienced students too. So um, wherever you are, we'll try to meet you there and um, help you uh, push through this first draft and this. Uh, if this is your first ever script, it's a big accomplishment just to say, I finished this, it's done. And it kind of proves that you can do it. So by the end of this, you should know that you can write a whole script. Whether or not it's perfect is kind of beside the point. Um, you have to start go to the gym and start running laps if you wanna be in the Olympics. So 
we're not really going to focus on writing a perfect or amazing or even particularly good script. You're going to be instead incentivized to pick something that you're a little less attached to so you can just learn how to write a script. So try not to pick a masterpiece for this class or something you've been working on your whole life or something that means a lot to you and something that you're going to have to get absolutely perfect before you're happy with it. Pick something newer and fresher that is going to be just fun and get you excited and um, keep your interest and uh, attention up for the eight weeks that it requires to get all the way through it. And then after it's done, you can come back and edit it later if you want to, but there's no actual requirement to do that. And people tend to just learn a lot from just writing a draft. <coughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a scratchy throat today. Um, okay, so that's the overview of the whole course. Um, today is all about just giving you um, a look forward at everything that is to come, and also to start giving you that first little bit of feedback. So. If you're thinking, I have an idea for a movie, maybe start trying to write out a one-sentence version that would express that plot. We have a lot of guidelines and guidance for these things called loglines, which are just once a one-sentence expression of what is the movie about. Um, and that is going to be helpful for you to both explain to people what the movie is to get them interested in reading it, but it's also going to act as a sentence, of the one single sentence that's very important because it will help you stay on track and make sure that you're writing the same movie from beginning to end. So we can start on that today. It doesn't have to be perfect today. Um, if you already have some log lines that you want to get reviewed, you can do that in the second half of this class. So the first um, half will be looking at everything that is to come in the course and answering some of those initial questions that you guys might have. And then the second half is going to be, you're going to share what you have and we're going to give you feedback. So you should be ready to maybe post a few sentences about your ideas or if you're juggling between multiple ideas and you want to know which one you should go with, then maybe write out like a sentence or two for each one and a title if you have titles. Um, and we want to start sharing and interacting and getting feedback even very early on. We're not going to crush your dreams, don't worry. I mean, we're, you can write anything you want. Um, there are certain guidelines and things that will be easier to write as a beginner that we're going to give you suggestions and um, help you maybe pick something that will be more within your reach if that's uh, an issue. But um, get used to receiving a lot of feedback if you want to be a screenwriter, to say the least. Okay, so how to join. Um, you can buy the course on its own at scriptcamp.net slash classes, or you can become a supporting member um, at scriptcamp.net slash membership. That's going to be 40% uh, off if you buy that yearly. Um, if you haven't signed up yet, but you want to, you can vote yes in the poll that Nacho is going to leave in our text chat to get immediate access to our bootcamp channels and to join the discussion and to start participating in the, um, uh, the, the text conversation that we have here. So there's going to be there's live in-person classes like interactive classes like this and we also always have our chat channels open for you to share ideas and give each other feedback and um just talk about your writing so lots of opportunities to interact and to um uh get all the help that you might need and to keep yourself motiv motivated and energized to finish um okay let's uh let's proceed to our slide on membership so unlimited membership includes all boot camps in all of the skill camp classes so I, although you'll be signing up at scriptcamp.net um this will still make you give you full access to every class that we do on all these different servers so this is much more than just screenwriting at this point you can take classes in novel writing animation coding languages and all these things for just the same price there's you don't pay more for additional servers there's over 70 hours of live classes a month at this point it's maybe getting closer to 100 hours um including all the different topics. So um, you'll also get access to that video library, which has recordings of the previous classes. So I highly recommend start your free trial for that at scriptcamp.net slash membership, and you'll get two weeks to try out everything you want and no obligation. So you can cancel at the end if you want. Um, and maybe try a yearly subscription if you want to save 40%. We've also got coaching options if you want to get um, everything included in a limited plus weekly coaching sessions with me. I can give you feedback on career questions or on specific pages of a script or whatever you want once a week um, you also if you sign up for either of these memberships will get a hundred dollars off consultations and proofreads um, consult the the full feedback on your script is not included in the course i would have to read way too many scripts to give everyone feedback so we have lots of free feedback options like we mentioned on the server like swaps and table reads and, and um, you can just post your script and see if anyone wants to give you feedback um, or you can buy it um, at which point I can give you full no sticky notes throughout the script, plus a half hour call to explain those points and to give you answer your questions and give you more help there. Um, so that's uh, here's a little more about that. Um, you can get that scriptcamp.net slash coverage. 
Okay, so why not introduce yourself? We're going to just maybe go down the list and you can tell us about yourself. What are your goals as a writer? If Have you written scripts before or is this your very first one? Um, what kind of genres are you interested in or what kind of who maybe who's your favorite screenwriter or what kind of movies do you want to make? Feel free to just share anything about yourself that you want in relation to this course. I'm just going to go right down the list and call on people if you um, want me to come back to you or something like that. Just let me know. Make sure to click that small gray microphone icon and to unmute yourself before you speak. Let's start with Amber Patton at the top. Of course. Um, hi. Uh, again, my name is Amber Patton. I am a novelist, screenwriter, short story writer, playwright. Um, I would say I am not quite a beginner. I'm a little past that. Um, as far as my writing goes, I've produced a handful of short films and uh, written most of those, directed and acted. Um, I mostly write drama, um, mostly family dramas. Um, and I think that's that's kind of my niche there as far as screenwriting goes. Um, I, I love just uh, character-driven stories. I love to find that beautiful arc of from where, an, where a character begins to where they end. Um, and yeah, I just like human, human stories. I, I very much am interested in just the overall human condition. So, um, yeah, I've been doing this, uh, for the last seven to 10 years. So, um, I'm really just looking to take my writing to a more professional level and, um, really start putting my work out there to be seen, um, by more people. Great. Thanks so much, Amber. And will this be your first feature scripts? Uh, no, this will be my second feature. Second. Okay. So um, awesome that you have some experience going in, though. The, like, all forms of writing can help. Um, they sort of help each other. So like if you're doing plays and novels and these things, too, they all sort of like um, they're different mediums, but having experience in one will help in other ways. Like playwrights tend to be really good at dialogue, for instance, and novelists tend to be really good at description things like that. So it'll all, it all adds up and it all helps. So glad to have you. Thank you so much for um, telling us all that. Let's um, check in with Dan. Hello, I'm Dan. I, Dan, I have, uh, well, I just got through one of these courses and uh, I will say this to anyone who decides to go full with this. Uh, before I will preempt this saying, if you see there's also the pilot class or other big multi-week course, don't do two at the same time. Trust nice. me. <laughs> yes, go ahead. But I've been currently in the process of writing it and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to try and finish it during this eight week process. Awesome, okay, cool. Yeah, that's what we usually recommend is we've seen many attempt to do multiple boot camps at once never seen somebody actually able to finish all of those projects and they end up having to cut one loose and prioritize um so not a big deal you can always try but like we've just never seen it so don't usually recommend it you're gonna probably be better off focusing on making one script really good at a time rather than having two that end up just kind of like okay or unfinished are there any other tips that you would give to new people dan who are trying this for the first time as in the very first writing project mm -hmm. it's gonna suck <laughs> it's gonna suck <laughs> If you just, a class just or a write it, just don't think. Don't overthink. Don't underthink either. Just don't think, just write. Yeah, that's what, so in when you're writing in such a condensed form like this, like, you know, eight weeks for the whole thing, that only leaves four weeks for the writing. We really spend that first four weeks getting all of our, all of our ducks in a row and all of your um, plot elements in place early on because when you're in that four-week sprint, you can't overthink too much and you can't always be changing the outline and rearranging the outline or you'll just get yourself confused. So yeah, when you get to the actual sprinting through it, writing phase of the second half of the course, you can't overthink. You can't be always second guessing yourself. That's a good suggestion. Thank you, Dan. Um, let's check with L. Hi, you guys. My name is L Lockhart. I am a grant writer, publishing agent, and an executive producer. I'm currently working with OTT Networks in content acquisition. Um, this is my very first script. Awesome. So I'm excited. Glad to be here. 
So is this, um, do you want to pursue screenwriting as um, in addition to what you already do, do you think? Are you trying to become like a studio writer or would you prefer to be a writer director? What exactly is your goal, would you say? So I've directed in the past and I've executive produced lots of things, yet I would like to increase my ability for more detailed writing as opposed to more technical business oriented writing. Mm -hmm. So this is my goal currently, yes, to be able to be a, a entry level screenwriter right now, just so that I can be able to um, draft out some some content that I have in mind and just be able to organize it in a more cohesive way. Cool. Awesome. And I'm sure as an executive producer, then there's certain areas of expertise that you would have that I just don't have as much knowledge um, into, having never really produced myself. I've directed a little bit, but mostly have been on the writing side. So great to have somebody with experience in a slight, in like a very related, but not quite exactly the same field. Right. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Elver. Glad to have you. Let's check with Guardian Pear. Um, I think he post he or she posted in the chat. Maybe can't talk. That's right. Okay. So Guardian Pair says, "Hi guys, good to be here. Sorry I can't talk. It's a lazy Sunday. People are deep in slumber. I'm start she. Okay. I'm starting out trying to get good. All genres, nothing hard set yet, as long as it intrigues me. Okay, great. So yeah, maybe you're just checking it out, just trying to see where your interest lies, trying to figure out what you're really drawn to. Um, that's all great. Um, I would say maybe." If, if you're trying to figure out what your first project is, just look at what are your favorite movies? What are your favorite genres? And those are always things that are easier to gravitate towards. Like um, if, if you are obsessed with horror movies, you should probably write a horror movie. And, uh, you know, the same with almost anything. So, um, yeah, definitely wa over the holidays, just watch and read a lot and just try to find, like, what draws your interest? What do you keep coming back to? Um, let's uh, check with, I'm not quite sure how to say this one, Mong Culture? <clears throat> hey, how's it going? My name Hi. is Brian. Hi. Uh, yeah, so my name is Brian. I um, I started off writing poetry, short stories, um, just trying to, you know, get uh, get more experience with writing. And then I ended up publishing a whole uh, uh, book in my poet uh, poetry collection. I uh, wrote a children's book, a uh, Christmas children's book, that uh, published in English and Spanish. Um, Afterwards, I did a graphic novel, so I teamed up with this illustrator who's done work with like Marvel and DC, like the '90s, and uh, yeah, I sent him a script on how to how I wanted a graphic novel to be, and he illustrated every panel, every page. That I liked it, so I'm working on two so right now with the word graphic novels, and I also want to move into you know writing a uh, screenplays, so like whether it's like short short films or not i just want to get into what i've written a couple of short ones but um want to learn more and get to know how everything works you know sure sure of course and th yet there's comic scripts are not terribly different from screenplays as well there's not really one really standard comic script format you see they look kind of all across the board but if you build yeah. up skills in screenwriting it becomes much easier to write comics too because it's they're both very visual mediums and just the format is somewhat similar. Definitely. Thanks, Brian. Um, Nacho, you. want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, yeah. Hey, everyone. Um, so, um, yeah, I've been writing since um, high school. Uh, wrote my first screenplay at age 15. And it was terrible, uh, like Dan says. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I've been writing for, for a long time. Uh, I did take a break for a few years. Uh, my, my background is more like in film distribution and development. So I haven't, um, I guess there was a period of time where I was doing, like, reading lots of other people's scripts and writing lots of, like, notes. And I just kind of, when I got home at the end of the day, I was like, it was really hard to switch gears to my own projects and i just like didn't write anything at all for a few years um and i got back into it um i've been writing i've written about 15 features now and um every project i learned something you know um and uh i really i feel like <clears throat> i learned a lot more um, working with connor compared to um like 
you know, uh, like studying film um, undergrad. <laughs> like I took screenwriting classes and I, I mean, I, depending on the school where you go, like, um, I guess this is a really practical approach. It's like step-by-step, step, like what's the first thing you need to do? Like here's, this is kind of like, I mean, everyone needs to find their own process that like works for you individually, like your own personal writing process. But this is a, this is like a, a great starting point for anyone. It's a, it's a method that works. Like we've seen so many people come here. They've never written a script and they knock out and, you know, script after script after script with these boot camps. Um, you know, I wrote, um, something like five or six in the past year and a half or so. And like, it's it works. I mean, you know, the, the, the approach is different from what I used to do where I would just sort of do a, like a more, I felt like I had a pretty good handle on outlining, but when I got into Connor's approach, it's like really like pragmatic, right? Like you're, you're working out sooner or later, you have to figure out like what's happening in every scene. And so what I found is by Connor's approach where you're doing this, you know, detailed outlining approach and, and detailed and like scene cards where you're figuring out what's happening in every scene. When you finally, when you start the pages, it's like, um, for me, it, it was a freeing experience. I was able to write the whole draft like fast. I think the first one I did this way, I wrote in a week and a half, like after having like a really detailed outline, I just flew through the pages and, you know, it was the first draft. So I, again, like keep in mind, the goal is just to sort of like get better at this skill by writing and really need to write lots of scripts to get you know, good. So, um, this has been a lot of fun working with Connor. Um, yeah, hopefully, um, this will help you in your journey as a writer as well. Thanks, Nacho. And if you're having difficulty with, um, uh, any technical stuff during the class, like how do I send a, how do, how do I find the text channel? How do I unmute myself? Something like that. Nacho is usually able to help more than I am because I'm going to be focused on the slides and the teaching and things like that. So um, feel free to um, tag him in a, a message in our chat channel if you need some help with something. Let's check in with Smash Guy. Hi there. Um, I've been I, I've been writing for about a year. Um, I I'm looking to, I, I wrote one draft of a screenplay. I'm looking to write something more in animation, um, more in that kids and family genre. I ended up, I, I'm looking to find a way to revise my current draft and only improve on it. Um, specifically, you know, working on issues such as talking heads or, um, primarily just make a better product than what I currently have. And I've been to a few of these court like classes in the past or, you know, weekly sessions for like fantasy or, or animation. And a lot of it has been extremely helpful. And I wanted to kind of just look into boot camp and, and kind of see where I could go with this. Cool. Awesome. Okay. And um, you should, if you're interested in animation, of course, um, Toon Camp has animation classes as well as um, other workshops and events coming up soon that are worth checking out. So are you, are you planning on writing an animated script for this class? You know, possibly. A lot of it, I want to see if there's anything I can pick up to refine what I currently have. Um, but it wouldn't hurt to also kind of play around with another idea. It's, um, you know, whatever I think um, piques my interest when, sure. when we get started. Sure, sure. And yeah, if, and if you want to get, if you have a completed project, it's always worth maybe doing a swap or a reading or something like that just to get that feedback before moving in to revise it more heavily. Mm -hmm. But we have plenty of ways to do, to do that on our server here and on our sister server, which is called um, Script Hive, too. So plenty of ways to get feedback. Um, thanks, Smash Guy. Thank you. Um, that's everyone. Let's get started with the slideshow. Right, that's everyone. Did I miss anyone? Looks like somebody just joined the server, student test 01. Do you want to unmute and introduce yourself? 
Yes, uh, so I just joined. I don't know what the discussion is about. So oh, we're just um, introducing ourselves, saying what your goals are, if you've written before, um, the kind of uh, things you're interested in writing, anything like that. I, I'm a newbie to the writing, so I'm a student. I'm just learning. Okay. Um, any particular genre that you want to write for the class, or any favorite filmmakers, or something like that? Um, so uh, I'm pretty new. So um, basically, I'm I'm more interested in uh, writing for action, action movies. Action, so, great. I love action. I write action too. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to understand the plot structure and how we do story develops. So those are the things that I'm still learning. Cool, cool. Well, you're in the right place. My specialties are action and horror. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sure, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. Let's let's continue here. So, a um, couple ground rules before we start. If you don't have an idea yet, you don't know what you want to write, maybe just pick something weird and different um, that you've always wanted to see, or some combination. Maybe you have, like, two favorite genres that never go together. You're like, I love Hallmark romance movies, and I love zombie movies. What if we did a Hallmark zombie movie? Maybe that would be fun. Like, just pick something. Put two things together that you haven't seen together before. It doesn't have to be incredibly original. We're just trying to pick something that'll get you excited and interested and able to finish this in the eight-week span of the class. <clears throat> so don't worry about making this a masterpiece. And get used to sharing your ideas and your work with me and with the other students at all stages, even the very early stages. It can be difficult to hear notes at these early stages, but less developed ideas just need more guidance and need more feedback. So just be prepared to be hearing feedback all the time. It doesn't mean you are commanded to make those changes or to do those things. I'm not going to like get on your case if you don't take the notes. Um, part of t receiving notes as a screenwriter is understanding that you don't have to take all of them and that the guidance and feedback, the feedback that you're getting is intended to help you create the best possible story and best possible script. But really, it's up to you what that final product looks like. So even if you're getting notes and feedback that you're like, I don't agree with this at all. I think it's great as it is. Part of the skills to learn here are how to receive feedback gracefully and how to say, things like, oh, thank you, I, I, I see, I'll see how I can work that in, or I'll see what I can do with that, or I appreciate the note, I'll see what, you know, just so, something where you will internalize it and be able to soak on it and think think about it for a while. Um, but uh, you're never gonna, you're not gonna get a grade, you're not being like, um, you're not, I'm not gonna check to make sure you apply the notes that we give you or anything like that. You are largely on your own. The guidance and feedback is just to help you make the best possible story. Um, after this week, so this week is fine, you can have your username be whatever you want, but if you've not already done so, and a few students just are already using real names and that's fine, um, but after this class, if you're going to continue in a boot camp past the intro session, please change your username to a, your real name. If you really don't want to use your real name, you can use your middle name or a nickname or your dog's name or your brother's name or something like that. Um, you can right click on your name on the left side of your, the screen and press change nickname. Um, if you want to do that, or we can do it for you, but um, that you really only have to do that at the beginning of the week one, so don't worry too much about that now. Um, so, re we recommend that you choose a brand new idea or a major rewrite, so something that you've gotten feedback on or will be able to get feedback on before the class, and you're going to be able to reimagine a little bit from the ground up, and you're not afraid to break it apart and rethink a lot of it. Um, you want to probably avoid true stories, anthologies, or adaptations of any kind because those are going to require more research, more time, and just be much more difficult to pull off in the eight weeks of the class, especially if you're just learning and this is your, one of your first scripts. Just don't do a time travel script. Uh, just trust me on this, and maybe you'll take that as a challenge and be like, I could do a time travel script, but then you'll regret it, because every time we see somebody take this as a challenge, they always regret it. So probably just don't do a time travel script. Probably also just don't do, don't do a historical unless you really are taking on that extra challenge and, or maybe you have a foundation in that um, period of time already, like you did your college thesis on it or something like that, then in that case, it might be fine. Or maybe all you watch is historical movies, so maybe you really, really know a lot about them. But anything that's going to require a lot of research, like a historical or truth, true event or anything that you have any kind of fidelity to reality, like an autobiographical story or the story of how your father moved to America or whatever, whatever it is, you're going to be... It's, it's going to behoove you to choose something that does not require that extra time, care, and research within the time frame that we have. So probably don't pick one of those. Um, be really careful of scripts that involve clones, parallel universes, or anything that involves multiple copies of the same people. Body switching stories are almost impossible um, if for people who are just starting out. And anything that involves extensive use of flashbacks, so like twisting interwoven timelines, or um, a lot of... Mo uh, the montage thing doesn't really come up in the premise, but... Um, I always warn people against 
leaning too heavily on montages and flashbacks um, just as you're conceiving of the project. So if it's something that really relies on both of those things or one of those things, maybe just be careful and, and pivot to a different idea if you have one. Um, but this is a good time to just take a big swing and write something wacky and fun while building those fundamental skills that you're going to need moving forward. And you're going to learn how to organize and outline a story. So here's uh, the overview of the whole process. Let me move that out of the way here. We start with the log line, and we're going to be looking at log lines today, though you don't have to have a perfect one by the end of class or anything like that. You have the whole holiday to work on this and refine it more. Um, but the log line is the one sentence expression of what the movie's about. It's going to include protagonist, what are they trying to do, what's standing in the way, and maybe some sense of the scope or the time frame. We'll get much more into log lines in a bit. Um, two is the sketchbook. So once you have a solid log line, you can move into the sketchbook phase where you'll open a blank Google document and you can just start filling out all of your ideas for characters, scenes, moments, um, lines of dialogue, uh, set pieces, um, locations they go to, any research information that you have to do. Um, it's just a place to keep all of your notes in the same spot. We don't want to have a bunch of different documents that have like little scattered notes here and there. So you can even make this now. I'm going to just skip ahead a few slides and... Do I have a slide about that? Maybe not in this one, but I would recommend um, that you just start it now. So just go to Google Docs. And we mostly, when we're sharing documents in the class, we're gonna use either Google Docs or PDF files. So I would go to Google, if you have a Gmail or YouTube account, you already have a Google Drive or you know Google Docs. So I would go there and just open a brand new blank document and just call it sketchbook, screenplay sketchbook, or if you have a name for your movie already, you can call it you know the name of the movie sketchbook. Um, and I would start, as we go through the class, then you, you can do, be doing more than just listening, you can be writing stuff down and starting to shape your idea as much as you can. If you have like a one sentence expression of the idea, then you can write that at the top. Um, maybe if you have some ideas for titles or if you have a few different ideas for different movies, just have a document open and I would be writing stuff down as well as questions that you have, observations and just anything else that you feel will help you follow along with the course and start learning more. So I would recommend, do, I'm not gonna check, make sure you do this or anything, but I would recommend you go to Google Docs, open up a new blank one and title it Screenplay Sketchbook and use that during class to be writing things down and be more than just listening, but already start to be thinking of how can I start to turn this idea into something that I can execute. So that's what the sketchbook is. Um, it doesn't actually have to involve any sketches. We just kind of call it that. Um, next, we move into Story Beats. That's um, on our week three class. Story beats are the major events of the script in the order that they should happen in. Um, you don't have to have it be perfect. You don't need to know every single scene, but we need to get the major things in place, meaning that we're going to have to really start studying structure. So we know what each of these moments are supposed to do. We know that the midpoint is not just the center of the story. It's also a moment that significantly raises the stakes, for instance. Or we know that the break from Act 1 to Act 2, the, the first act break, is going to be moving your character from a place of stasis and perhaps comfort into the new upside down topsy-turvy world of the second act. Thing things like this that we'll get much more into in the successive classes, but structure is a really, really important element of what we do here. So story beats are all about aligning the events of the story underneath their proper structural headings. And so you know what these moments are and why they're in those places. Next, we expand that into scene cards in the following week, which is going to be a, an expanded blown up version of that story beats outline into a full paragraph for every single scene as well as the pages it's going you're going to mark out the pages that it will take place on so you're making a really detailed plan for what's going to happen on every single page of the script finally once all that's done that's the first four weeks of the class we go to pages which is an industry term that means you actually go from outlining and pre-writing to you start the script and begin to stage scenes and write dialogue and all that kind of great stuff so you don't actually need to get screenwriting software until uh, week four if you don't want to. When we, we would recommend you try out Art Studio Pro, which we have a, a link to that you can um, get a, a free trial there and um, use all of its great features. But you can really use whatever you want, but you should be using a screenwriting software. We should not be writing this in Word or something like that. Um, so those are the five steps. Let me just pause for any questions so far before I keep going. But these are the, this is just like a big overview, um, a really zoomed out version of the entire course. Let me pause here and ask, does anyone have any questions so far on anything we've talked about? Uh, I have one question. So do you recommend any specific uh, software that we should be using for writing the screenplay? Yeah, I would recommend Arc Studio Pro. And if and we have a, a link for a free trial there. And then if you want some, to try something else, Writer Duet is a great second option. We can link that to you so, in the chat if you want. 
both both of them are paid uh, like we need to pay or is there any there, there's a free to... there's a free version of writer duet which is and there's there's a free version of both of them that's limited to three scripts i think um but I, and you still have access to almost all the features but you can pay for a more advanced version that has unlimited scripts okay, thank you sure but you would not need to spend any money on the software to if you if you're just starting and just want to get into the class um your first three scripts are included in almost all of these Nacho just posted a link to all of the screenwriting softwares um, that we are sharing in the chat. So if you mouse over the classroom channel and click that small white word bubble that says open chat, then you should be able to see where um, links to all of the above and also links to get those free trials. Other questions? All right, if there's no more questions, we'll continue. So um, if you're doing a rewrite, you will have a slightly different process that we won't be fully going into right now or um, fully expanding on at the moment. But um, the rewrite looks a little bit like this. Um, you're going to want to, instead of starting with a uh, sketchbook, you'll start with a re-outline, which is going to be a ver a, an outline that reflects the version of the script that you have. Then you're going to want to get notes and um, collect all of those into what we call the notes document. And then you're going to sort of mash those together to create the revision guide, which is going to be like a roadmap that's going to take you from beginning to end of this new draft. Um, so you can bring a rewrite to the class. We, this is a little bit more geared to writing something brand new. But if you're willing to make major changes and to totally break apart a uh, script that you've had before, and you are willing to get feedback on it outside of the course, because keeping in mind, I'm not going to be able to read every script and get feedback on it before the class starts, then you could definitely bring a rewrite to the feature bootcamp. So, um, script finished in eight weeks. Will this draft be good? No. And let's move beyond the idea that any draft has to be good, especially when you're just learning. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's good or not. You have to think of these as bricks in the road. And you don't, you can't stop and think way too much of after over whether or not any brick is a masterpiece of a brick. You have a road to build. So that's why I like to present it and think about it here, and why I suggest just start with something that you're not as attached to, that you're okay with messing up or doing a really bad job with. Um, give yourself permission to do a not very good job because you're not going to start out good at this. Nobody starts out good at this. Um, we are screenwriters because we have good ideas and we believe in them, but to become a working screenwriter, meaning you want to actually write studio movies um, in the US system or maybe the UK, you do have to untether yourself from your ideas to some extent. And what, one of the big skills to work on, the main three things you have to do to, be a, to learn to be a screenwriter, one, read a lot. You absolutely must read a lot. There's no skipping that step. Two, write a lot. And three, move on. You need to build the skill of moving on because even if you spend, you know, months or perhaps years setting up a script and getting it to the, to the highest possible levels, it can still fall apart at almost any time, which I'm sure those of you who have worked in producing or distribution of these things like this have seen this happen. They can fall apart at any stage. So you need to build the skill of being able to move on. Um, and even in the best case scenario, your idea will be bought and developed and you'll get lots of notes and revisions on it and then rewritten and then you might get fired off your movie and then it'll get directed and then it'll get reshot and then it'll get edited. And after all of that, will it even look like your original script? Maybe not. And you have to get used to that idea unless you're directing yourself, in which case you'll have much more control, but it will also just be a whole different set of skills and responsibilities that you have to worry about. Um, if you're trying to be a studio writer, you have to realize that this is you're creating a, a blueprint for a multi-million dollar company, um, and that when you have a multi-million dollar company that's going to employ more than a hundred people and move millions of dollars around, then people are going to want to put uh, have more control over it. Um, and that money comes from somewhere, and the people who are responsible for that money have a say. Everyone has a say if they are, um, you know, contributing something to the project. So you might have multiple bosses. You might have three to five people giving you notes on a script. It may not really resemble what you originally intended by the end. You have to learn to work with people and to take even bad, dumb notes and make the best possible product that you can. Um, so your goal is really not to write one amazing thing, especially in, in this course. It's to become a generator of unlimited ideas and to develop the skills necessary to execute them consistently on this quick time frame of 8 to 12 weeks and with a high level of quality. We're not trying to coach you into writing a great script or a script that will go anywhere or sell or get you meetings or lots of money or managers and agents. This takes many, many years to get to that level. You're trying to become a generator of unlimited ideas. 
So release yourself from certain expectations and just realize this is work. This takes a long time. Nobody starts out good at it. You should think of this not as digging for gold, but you're running laps at the gym. So um, I probably won't go through this whole thing just because we ha this is one of our bigger slideshows and we have plenty of things to get through. So I'll probably just highlight one or two of these sort of myths and assumptions about this. The first one is that you need a degree or film school, internship, classes, workshops, or nepotism of some kind in order to get started doing this. You don't need any of those things. You don't even need classes like this. You can learn all you need to learn by reading scripts, writing scripts, and moving on, um, meaning pro work. You should be reading pro scripts at least one every single week, ideally three a week. Um, and we'll be checking in every class asking, what scripts did you read recently? What did you notice? What did you like? There's not right or wrong answers. It's not like um, uh, a test. We're just asking you to read actively and to pay attention and to take notes and to um, to to read with an eye for improvement. Um, so uh, it's not all networking. It's not all nepotism. Those things do help significantly. And if you have a family member who's in the business, then you will have a leg up. And if you have, uh, maybe if you go to film school, you'll make certain connections you would not have made otherwise. But none of those things are actually requirements to start to uh, to be a screenwriter. Um, you don't need to go to college to do this. You don't. Nobody's going to ask for your degree. Um, certain other things. Uh, anything else I want to highlight on here? I mean, I think we understand the the. I, I would hope that we understand that um, bad movies are not always written by bad writers, I guess I would say. So you can look at anything that's come out in a major theater and say, that was total crap, I could do better than that, that writer must be terrible. But chances are that is a writer at the absolute top of their game. Remember that they hire multiple writers on these things, the writers are not in charge of big studio movies for the most part. They are following the orders of multiple network execs um, who are ultimately the ones in control. They can change it as much as they want. The writer is not the one responsible for how it ultimately ends up. They are a big part of it, or they can like steer the ship a little bit, but they ultimately are not the ones at the wheel. Um, so remember that if you're reading scripts by pro writers, then there's something to learn from them, even if you didn't like the result all that much. If professional work is always worth studying and paying attention to, even if you're like, well, the movie turned out bad, but something was right. Some spark here, there was some seed of something amazing that got this to be made. So. Um, try to have respect for the people that do this professionally and to, to learn as much as you can from them. Um, anything else on here that I want to highlight? Not really. I think I think that's the basics. Um, let's, uh, let's move on to our next slide here. Oh, I don't have to go through all these either. These are just the doom and gloom realities of this. It's saying, you know, there's a high cost of living in LA. It's frustrating and time consuming to do this. It takes a huge commitment of time and brain power, you have a higher chance of joining Major League Baseball than becoming a paid feature writer. Um, but once you know that, if you know those things and you still want to do it, then you're in the right spot because you have to love it and you have to really, 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 really love it in order to be able to do this. Because if you don't, um, then there's no way you're, you're competing with everyone who does. You know, you're competing with everyone who wakes up at 4 a.m. to mark out where are the act breaks in their favorite TV show and to get those pages in every day after day after day and to read three blacklist scripts a week and to, um, you know, you're, you don't have to do those things, but you're competing with the people that are and there are not unlimited slots. Um, so here's how to be a feature writer in really kind of reductive steps. I won't spend way too long on this, but number one step is just get really good at writing movies. Um, step number two is go back and actually do step number one because almost everybody thinks that they're ready before they really are ready. This takes years of doing this. Um, step three is going to be to put together a portfolio of three to five really undeniably incredible scripts as like writing samples mostly and then you're going to want to get repped by a manager nowadays manager usually comes first you're going to want to enter contests and fellowships network as much as you can so probably move to los angeles and be in la will help you a lot and you're going to want to maybe query perhaps although querying um usually won't work unless you have really high contest placements or something like that very few uh, managers um, are actually looking seriously at queries nowadays some of them still do occasionally but like it's almost always easier to query if you have a major accomplishment for that script already um, after that you're going to work with that manager to either get a writing assignment possibly pitching on multiple open writing assignments that are going to come up during your general meetings um, and or, or, or perhaps work with your rep to develop a script that may be the one they signed you off of or maybe a brand, more often brand, a brand new one that they're going to pick from your all of your ideas or maybe an idea that they have as a screenwriter as a pro hollywood screenwriter you have to get used to working on other people's ideas um and then you're going to want to develop that script with them until they're ready to take it out which means send it to their network of contacts and get you a bunch of meetings you're going to want to then 
take a bunch of general meetings, which are going to be like, they like the script, they don't want to make it, but they just want to meet with you. I've done two rounds of these, one in 2017 and one in 29, no, 20, early 2020. So I, you can do this multiple times, the rounds of general meetings, at which point you might start making contacts at these companies and you can check in with them and follow up with them maybe. And they are sometimes open to you sending them scripts later. Um, not always, but sometimes they are. And then you're going to do the preceding steps about 500 times as various scripts fall apart or don't work out. You're going to use your rep's guidance as much as you can to try to position yourself by writing the strongest, most sellable possible project and just get something off the ground. And then finally, you will get something sold or produced, join the Writers Guild, and, uh, you know, party. But <laughs> the work doesn't end there. You can always get dropped by your reps. Uh, you can always have all your projects fall apart. Your rep might quit the business and you have to start over. Like you have to prove yourself and break in multiple times. Sometimes I would know I've done it three times by now. So it, you sort of never stop having to kind of, until you hit a certain threshold, you will constantly have to sort of, it's a very uphill struggle. It's like Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the mountain. It keeps rolling back down. Um, you're going to be doing that for a while. So get, settle in for the long haul. And if you want to write movies professionally, settle in for a years long journey. Um, any questions on just the career before we move on? I have a question about one of the suggestions that you mentioned about uh, reading uh, screen uh, sc sc screenplays, right? Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about it uh, just a, a few days ago. So um, if, if you try to better grasp the idea, like what, what the genesis of the idea and how they develop the story, uh, so, do you recommend uh, watching the movie and reading the script, or, uh, or reading the script or watching the movie? So basically, they can go hand in hand. So if you read the script, then you can understand how they made that uh, script into a movie, or the other way around. Like uh, they, if you watch the movie and then read the script, or you can also translate back what was the actual form. They, even though they presented it in one way, sure. they actually what are the details that they wrote? So which one would be more beneficial to grasp the uh, looking at the examples and try to um, develop the Thank sure. You. Good. Good question. Um, I think you should do both. Um, and but the priority should be reading scripts before you've watched the movie or scripts that have not been made, because that's the closest thing to what we're going to be making. Is we're writing spec speculative scripts, specs as they're called. Um, so you should definitely focus on being able, trying to like be able to picture the action on the page without having the reference of what that would look like or who that character would be cast as or what you know what actors would be playing them or those things. You should try to get really used to reading scripts without that, but you should also be able to do both. Like I recommend read the script, then watch the movie. Sometimes you should read the movie, then watch the script. Um, I would do a combination of them, but primarily you're gonna be reading and without you don't need to watch them and, and maybe even read things that haven't been made. There's plenty of those on the lists that we have. The blacklist is gonna be your best place to look for scripts to read. Some of them have been made, some of them haven't been made, but um, the, the majority of scripts on there there's something worth learning in all of them, and they were all written as specs. They were not, they're not shooting scripts. They're not more advanced versions of the document that we'll be making. So we have a link to um, all of those scripts that we can leave in the chat, so you can definitely find enough to read three of them every week. Thank you. Thank sure. you very much. Thank you for the question. Um, let's, uh, let's, oh, there's the link. Oh. It's already been posted in the chat. So if you scroll up in the chat just a little bit, it says blacklist. Um, and you can click that link there and get access to all of those scripts. I think we had another question. Go ahead. Yeah, I got a question real quick. Um, mm -hmm. So you said something about like moving to LA is probably like one of the greatest things you can for your uh, career. Um, I currently live in Texas, and I know there's like a bunch of like um, in San Antonio is like fairly small compared to LA and other stuff. But then there's Austin too, who has a lot of like a lot of filming done there too. Wanted to kind of get your thoughts cities or other cities that you could like visit besides LA if LA is too far or too expensive for them to get there sure sure um so yeah Texas is, a, is not a bad place to be especially because they have um a more significant film industry there and in Georgia and in New York um so like Atlanta New York Austin and LA are kind of like the big film cities in in the U.S. Um, you don't have to move to LA right away. It's not going to be the best thing you can do instantly. And you can build your skills and you can learn to read and write from anywhere. So I would spend a couple years getting really good at writing before you move to LA because I think you need to move to LA for the networking. But if you're, ne if you're networking without a great script to show people, you're not going to do a very good job at networking. Does that make sense? So like yeah. you want to have something worth sharing first. 
and then move here because once you have something worth sharing and you are here you can make more opportunities for yourself and like if you meet a producer at a party or something and you and th they think your idea sounds awesome you can actually have that script for them and it will actually be awesome and that's how you start a career um, rather than you meet them and you tell them your idea and they're like well that sounds cool let me know when you write it i guess um, so you move here when you're when you're ready and when you've built your skills significantly and you have a body of work to start to share. I appreciate the answer. Sure, sure. But but you'll be able to meet uh, plenty of people who are doing the same stuff in Texas, too. So, yeah, definitely check out Austin specifically um, for its filmmaking scene. Maybe try getting on set, maybe even student films or, or maybe like local filmmakers. Um, you can get experience and you can meet people in your in your local community before you worry about moving here. Um, but when it just when it comes to writing, just focus on the skill and the craft first before you think about moving. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Sure, great question. Anyone else? Okay, let's keep going. Um, I won't do this whole slide. We know writing movies is hard. It's hard to get good feedback. It's hard, especially because um, you know people who are willing to give you feedback are not always going to be experts, and the experts usually charge a lot of money, um, things like that. So some good reasons to write a movie, maybe you want, the number one reason is you want to be a pro screenwriter. Number two might be you just want to be more skilled at the craft for fun or for personal enjoyment reasons. Maybe you want to direct the movie yourself. Um, but those are kind of the, the massive reasons here. It's very uncommon and unlikely for someone to write just one single movie then have it get made. In fact, I'm not sure if that's happened. So don't worry too much about whether any individual brick is a masterpiece or even particularly good. You have a whole road to build and you just need to start laying them down. Um, okay, oh, here's my sketchbook slide. Um, yeah, so if you have not already done this, go to Google Docs and open up your new document, make your sketchbook, call it title of the movie sketchbook. And at the top, you're gonna wanna write these things down. One is just title. So if you have a title, write that down. If not, say just title, question mark, I guess. Um, second is genre, so you should hopefully have an idea of what the genre would be. Um, and try not to pick a bunch of things, you're just going to want to combine two genres at most. If something is an action, western, comedy, horror, romance, then it's like it starts to just sound like meaningless soup. So try to pick just two things at most. And last, um, comps, which stands for comparables. Those are going to be other movies that are sort of like yours, so you can pitch it as, you know, I don't know, um, Snakes on a Plane meets Die Hard, or whatever it is. It's like, it's going to be one movie meets another movie in terms of, you can think of it maybe like the world or um, the setting of the first one with the style or the approach of the second one. There's not actually a really an exact science to it, but um, you're going to want to be able to pick comps. You can have a bunch, list out a bunch of ideas for comps, but ultimately you want to just, you're going to want to settle on two. Try not to pick way too many comps. Um, but yeah, put that at the top of your documents now. Title, genre, logline, and comps. So be filling out the sketchbook with ideas as you develop this today. In about 10 to 15 minutes, we're going to share ideas. If you have just, even if it's only a little shred of a seed of an idea, then we're going to be able to give you some suggestions and help you expand that out or maybe help you find a direction to take that in. And with the expect, with the, um, with the intention of uh, you working on the logline over the holidays and getting it into shape before the, this program starts on January 8th. Any questions on this? Make sure to check the text chat too. Okay. Um, so uh, I would, yeah, make your make your sketchbooks. Um, let's talk log lines. And uh, if you are, um, if you think you have a good idea of what your log line will be, maybe write it out now or as we're talking about these. And maybe you can um, just check out these next couple slides and think of how to change and refine that a little bit before you share it. But when we go into log lines and when we are sharing ideas, you should be ready to unmute and to read your logline out loud and answer questions and explain a bit about the idea. I would be prepared to hear that this idea isn't really working at the moment. It's not to say, if you hear that, that it's not to say you should give up or this can't possibly ever work, but just be prepared to hear feedback, even at these early stages. Be prepared to hear, I can't quite see the movie. When we say, I can see the movie, um, that's a, a development developmental note, which means I can envision or I can picture what's going to be happening in the movie and like especially what's going to be going on in the second act. Um, it's a good sign. You want the f feedback to be, I can see the movie. If it's, it might be like, oh, there's some cool elements here, but I can't quite see the movie. That might mean that we just need to get more concrete and specific and um, lay out more clearly what we're, what we're going to be watching someone do in the story. Um, so just be prepared to hear some notes on this idea and get used to hearing notes, like I keep saying. 
Um, and also just be prepared to speak out loud. Um, screenwriting is a very social job. Um, you will need to be good in a room is the term that they use, meaning you are quick on your feet and you're clever and you can ask the right questions and you can incisively get to the heart of an issue. You can diagnose problems with other people's scripts, especially if you want to write for TV, um, which we, we'll talk about that more in the TV course, um, which is going to be Fridays from 6 to 8. But um, even when you're writing features, it is a very social. This is not like writing novels or poetry, which you can do by yourself, largely at home. This is an extremely social form of writing. And your personality really matters here. Your ability to sell something in the room really matters. And you should take these things into account. Maybe try, take a public speaking course or a theater course or improv course or these things which can help you be quick on your feet and um, well-spoken in a room and not cracking under pressure. Um, and the ability to articulate is so important. So if we, we, we'll sometimes hear these things like somebody will say, oh, I have this great idea here. I'm just not very good at explaining it. It's a little bit like saying, uh, I want to be like, I'm, I'm a good runner. I'm just not very fast. It's like the job is articulating it. So you need to learn to articulate well and to explain your ideas very clearly and um, in such a way that somebody else can understand them. And it's okay if they, you, they have some questions or they're not quite clear on everything, but just be ready to answer those questions as succinctly as you can. So let's look at log lines. What's a log line? It's the story's central conflict distilled into a sentence. It basically tells you what is the movie. I mean, in addition to the title and genre, this is the movie, um, or this is the, you know, the quick version of explaining what the movie is. Um, it implies a kind of a visual, sort of visual action. So what we're going to be watching people do, who is the, in sorry, what is the inciting incident? That's the event that kicks off the story. Who's the protagonist, meaning the central main character that we're focusing on and following and really investing in that person's central journey. Even if you have a lot of characters, almost every single story will still have a central protagonist, even ensembles. Um, two-handers are kind of the one exception to this, but I would not recommend writing a two-hander if you're just starting. That would be like um, some buddy cop movies, for instance, and some romance stories are sort of two-handers where they have two protagonists of completely equal, even weight. Really tricky to write. You probably want to pick a very protagonist-driven story, which the majority of stories are, thankfully, in the Western style. Um, so the protagonist, uh, we want to know what they want, what's in their way, and a sense of what happens if they fail. So the stakes or the ticking clock we need to, you know, save the. Um, we need to, you know, rescue the president before they blow up the White House, or we need to hold off the zombies um, until morning because they they will go away when the sun comes up, or I need to, I don't know, get get a date before I ship off to the military. Something like that, which is just implying a sense of urgency, is really useful for features. Um, if it's, it feels like it's lacking urgency and it's a s much smaller story with lower stakes, it's going to start to feel like maybe this should be a short story or a one-act play or something like that. Which is not to say you can't write dramas or even... Uh, Slice of Life is the one place where we kind of run into some trouble because Slice of Life kind of doesn't really follow almost any of the rules or the guidelines that we're talking about here. So I can't help you much with Slice of Life. But almost any other genre, we should have a very clear sense of main character, what do they want, what's in their way, what happens if they fail. So let's look at a template for this. You can use this if you're not sure what else to use. And this is good to start with, even if you're going to change it a little bit afterwards. It's going to be when or after... The inciting incident, so the thing that kicks the story off, an adjective protagonist must conflict before or in order to stakes or ticking clock. Ticking clock being that element that I mentioned that adds urgency, you know, like a bunch of kids need to clean up the house before mom and dad get home and find out that they had a crazy party. That would be a ticking clock. And also a level of, you know, the stakes would be their parents are going to be mad at them if they fail, right? Um, so different genres have different levels of stakes. Not everything needs to be life and death. If you're writing comedy, the worst thing that could possibly happen might be the couple breaks up or the friends have a fight or something like that if you're writing horror or action it should be life and death or else it won't feel like a very effective horror it won't be very scary as a horror it won't be very tense as action um it doesn't that's that's not like a hundred percent always true i can there are counter examples to these things but generally with a feature we're trying to push the stakes as high as they make sense to be for our genre so i would write down this formula if you have your sketchbook open when slash after inciting incident an adjective protagonist must conflict before or in order to stakes or ticking clock and start thinking in these terms maybe try to take what you have and start to write it out in these terms i'm going to talk about what these things mean a little bit more so you guys should be writing and working as i'm doing that so that when we are ready to share in about 10 minutes then you can have already started to you know phrase it in terms that will be more helpful to you as a log line.
Um, any questions on just on this before I go more into it? I'm going to go a little bit more into the purpose of log lines and um, some things to pay attention to in log lines. But does anyone have any initial questions before I get into that? Okay, no questions. So let me just point out a couple things. One, choose your adjective carefully and your the way you describe your protagonist carefully. It should feel like this is the right person for this story. But you know that you can describe a person in several different terms, right? If somebody is a, um, you might describe her as a timid um, tax collector or a t timid meter maid. But maybe the story isn't really about her job. It's more about her kids. So you might describe her as, you know, a, a brand new mother, for instance. And that those are two ways of describing the same person. But one of them is more relevant for the story that you're telling. So you want to choose that adjective carefully. That adjective is usually going to usually going to be something. Sorry, I need to slow down and enunciate. <clears throat> that first adjective is going to be something that is relevant for the character and makes them feel like the right person for the story. So it might be a trait that they're struggling with. It might be something that uh, a particular tactic that they use um, in order to accomplish their goals, right? Like think of Monk, the detective from the TV show. He is, we've seen a million detective shows, but what's his thing? Oh, he has obsessive compulsive disorder. So that's the particular like tactic and also to some extent limitation that is going to be influencing how he goes about solving his goals and accomplishing his um, quests, uh, you know, his, his case of the week in every episode of that show. So we've picked that we have, to, we have to pick that adjective carefully and make it feel like um, relevant to the thing that we're about to watch. So don't just choose it randomly and probably don't just choose the first thing that comes to your head for that kind of person. If you say like a determined detective needs to solve a crime, then it's going to be like, well, we expect a detective to be determined. So that doesn't really tell us very much about them. So you can maybe that might be a sign that you need to make your character more specific and make a more concrete, stronger choice. Or it might be just that you need to um, find a different way to describe that person or find something that links them to the case that they're in. It's like, I don't know, it was they're investigating a serial killer that murdered somebody with a mop and your main character used to be a janitor, right? Okay, something like that, an ex-janitor detective. Um, you might see how that could link them to that story in some way. That's a dumb example, but hopefully you see what I mean. Like the, um, we have a, your police are chasing a bootlegger while your main character is an alcoholic detective. Okay, I can get the fact that that's going to be something he's struggling with and making their journey, his journey more difficult and also something that links him directly to the fact that he's pursuing a bootlegger. He has like a personal investment in this particular case. So try to pick that adjective and description of that main character very carefully. Um, other things. So what's the logline for? It's going to persuade people to read the script because if you have a good logline, there's a higher chance that it's a better script. Uh, logline is a good barometer for the quality of the script. So we expect somebody... Um, a poor logline to be not that well written, just for the most part, so someone's more likely to read it if the logline's great. It also makes people easier, it makes it easier for people to remember and discuss your script, and it's useful for sharing pages with fellow writers because you can kind of remind us what's supposed to be happening and what the general crux of the narrative is. In terms of writing, this is going to serve as a sort of compass for you during the outlining and writing process to really keep yourself on track and to make sure that you're not drifting too far from your original intentions. Um, you can look back to the logline to make sure that you are capitalizing on the central premise and that you are supporting and amplifying and advancing that central premise throughout, especially the middle of your story, but all throughout the narrative. And this is also going to give you a head start on outlining because of our template that we use. We have the inciting incident. We have the, the section that describes the adjective protagonist is going to be like what we need to set up in the first 10 pages. We know that the, um, the stakes or ticking clock is going to be something that comes into play during that all is lost moment towards that break into that third act. So just by having a really strong logline, you'll already have some of the key events of your story in place before you even begin. Um, so a good logline gives your reader a head start or gives you a head start on outlining. Here's the, well, I won't go into this now. Let's, let's, let's come back to this. I just kind of touched on this, but I don't want to give way too much information at the beginning yet. Um, maybe let's look at some good log lines. Do we have those on here? Um, I could show you some of mine. Yeah, I don't think we have just like a big list of log lines on this. We do in the chat, but um, let's look at some of the log lines for some of my features. Um, and these are going to be the ones that I've had the most success with. Um, and not every one you can see is going to follow that exact template of when or after inciting incident in adjective protagonist most conflict before stakes. But I always do start with that, and I sort of adjust it from there 
as certain elements of that become implicit in the, the sentence itself. So um, feel free to check these out. And Nacho, just thank you, Nacho, in the chat, just linked us a bunch of log lines um, and a bunch of examples and some tips in writing these. Um, so I would, while you all are working on this, we're going to share in five minutes now. So at the 20 minute mark, get ready to post and share whatever you've got, even if it's just a little bit, or if you're juggling between multiple ideas um, and trying to figure out which one you want to go with, uh, you can list us out maybe two or three of your favorites and we can help you choose. It, even if you don't write something out or don't have something ready to share, you can still maybe just explain what kind of movie you want to make and we can give you some suggestions maybe of things to read or anything like that. Okay, so here's um, my log lines over here on the, on the left side of your screen. Um, Peter and the Wolves was the script that I broke in with in 2017 that placed in Launchpad Top 10 and Nickel Fellowship quarterfinals, got me signed for the first time with my first manager and got me a round of meetings all over Hollywood. The Tube was my 2019 Nickel semifinalist script that I got a bunch of read requests and meetings off of, but I didn't actually set up, set up these scripts at any production company. Um, Hintline was my 2020 script that is set up with DJ2 Productions, the producers of the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. And The Knowledge is my 2021 script that was set up briefly, though it's no longer set up with um, uh, a major production company in town as well. That's sort of an action car chase, kind of Guy Ritchie vibe script. Um, so feel free to look at these log lines here and just maybe get inspired by these. I can tell you the genres that I really look at or that I really specialize in are going to be action. So The Knowledge is an action film. Hintline is a thriller with a dark comedy kind of uh, sensibility to it. The Tube is a surrealist dark comedy, and Peter and the Wolves is a historical horror thriller. So that's sort of what I do, and I'm going to be able to give you guys the best feedback on things in my genres, horror, action, and thriller. If you're writing outside of my genres, I can still help you. I've read a trillion scripts and have done this for a long time, um, so don't feel like you have to do those things. You should do what you're excited about and what you want to do. Um, but let's ask, do we have any last questions on log lines before we start to share some of our ideas? Or questions on any of these, if you guys have any. We have a message in the chat from Amber that says, I'd like to read the tube. Sure, Amber, I'll send it to you after class if you want. It's really weird. Any other questions? So we're hearing some um, background sound from Robert's mic, if you wouldn't mind just clicking the uh, mute button in the bottom left-hand corner of your Discord screen. Thank you. Okay, if there's no more questions, let's share and start to discuss. So feel free in the chat, post what you've got, even if you've got just a broken half-formed sentence or idea. Be ready to hear feedback, of course. Um, but uh, let's share and let's let's bring up the, uh, the template again so you can just look at this. When or after inciting incident, an adjective protagonist must conflict or else stakes is kind of the basics of this. But um, feel free to share what you want. Let's take a look. Do we still have stream chat working? No, just a bunch of spam comments from our YouTube. Great. <laughs> okay. All right, so feel free in the chat. You can mouse over the classroom channel and click that small white word bubble that says open chat. And you can post in there and get that first round of feedback from me and comments from the rest of the class if you want. I'll give you guys a few minutes for this. Thank you, Brian. We're going to wait until a few of these are posted, so we'll give you a little time, and then once we have two or three of them, then I'll start with the feedback, and while we're doing that, you can feel free to add yours into the queue. We're not guaranteed to get to everybody, but we'll get to as many as we can. I'll give it about one minute, and then I'll start calling on these. Thank you, Amber.
Oh, uh, Joel says the stream audio is very quiet. You may want to just adjust a little. Me? Sure, I can do that. Is this better? I turned it up by like a whole decibel. Okay, I've adjusted that. And um, if you need to, by the way, adjust anyone's volume, you can right click on their um, avatar on the left part of the Discord window. And you'll find a bar at the bottom. You can slide that bubble up to the right to turn it up or to the left to turn it down. Thank you, 99 Square. And thank you, Smash Guy. OK, so looks like we've got, um, yeah, make sure to include your title and genre if you can, please. But we've got a couple that have been posted we're ready to start looking at. Yeah, it can just be untitled if you're not sure. We're just going to go down the list, so we'll start with Brian. Is this a comedy, Brian? Uh, yeah, I'd say it's like a horror comedy or a mystery comedy, something like that. Uh, I have it leaning towards more comedy than or like horror. Yeah, this sounds like a comedy premise to me. Okay, and do you have a title yet, or is it still untitled? I don't know. I mean, I've been working with some like for the past, and it's like, uh, I was thinking like, Post for cash LLC or something, you know, just because they're like whole intentions to like rob places, you know, they're looking for cash, you know, but what they, was it? Uh, Go ghost for cash? Was that the name? Yeah, yeah. Ghost, but, is it like a four? Like, ghost for cash, call now, 1 800. Ghost for cash. Yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. we'll just call it Ghost for but, Cash for now. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm just, it's still, uh, yeah, I'm still working on the title, but yeah, it's, it's leaning towards like comedy. Okay, we'll say horror comedy then, because um, they're yeah. going into a haunted house. Sure. All right, can you read the logline out for us, please? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me uh, scroll up. <clears throat> a group of four con artists go around pretending they are paranormal hunters in order to rob the places and make a quick buck. And so one night, they actually do run into a haunted house to rely on their con skills in order to survive the night. All right. Thanks for this. So a couple things things um the first thing yeah. is that um a group of people is not really a protagonist and we really have to find a protagonist um so maybe be thinking you know adjective protagonist um something that makes this particularly yeah. relevant for this main character like is the main character um may maybe be thinking what's motivating them specifically or what makes this a relevant journey to them like is this the one of is this the one that um your is your hero the one that thinks that they should stop conning people and this is like his last job and he's out after this or is he the one that's trying to keep all his friends in the group and they're the ones who are trying to leave maybe just be thinking a little bit in terms of what what would be the journey of my main character um so yeah, you don't have so to have the answer one, at the moment go ahead so just focus on one person instead of a group yeah you can say a an adjective protagonist and his group of con artist friends or something like that but we really need to know who the main character is in, in the logline. Um, you don't have to have the answer now, but just be thinking of that. Um, so I like the yeah. idea they, they pretend they're paranormal hunters to go around and rob people until they run into a haunted house. The part that I'm tripping on is they have to rely on their con skills to survive the night. Are they conning the ghosts? So they're conning the people like uh, in a way that like probably go around the houses, make it seem like it's haunted for the people to call them, you know, and they come in and they just kind of like, Oh, the ghost stole your watch or something, but they actually pocketed the watch or pocketed the cash or something like that. They go in to rob the place and then they leave, and because they're the ones pretending it's haunted or making it seem like it's haunted, you know, once they leave, it stops. So that's how they're remaining in business. But so they don't really have to rely on their con skills to survive the night. It doesn't sound like. Um, no, because they have to. They are conning the people, but then they run into a haunted house. That's mm -hmm. actually haunted. So, so then they leave, right? Um, somehow they're stuck. I don't know. It's, it's still working. You know, it's a work in progress. But I'm thinking they're That's stuck okay. there. They can't leave. And they have to rely on their own skills. Like, let's say, like, um, uh, one or two probably were in jail. And they, like, acquired some set of skills there. They're helping them survive the night with, a you know, a haunted house or a, a group of ghosts, you know, mm -hmm. um, something like that. But but when you say con, you do you mean they're they're ex cons like they're ex convicts, or do you mean con as in confidence, like they're tricking like con? When, oh. when you're talking about con artists are people who they're gonna trick people into giving them their money, right? Exactly. So they're conning people for their money. 
Right, but so after the ghosts show up, I can't see how that's a relevant skill anymore, because most people would be like, ah, ghost, I'm going to run away now. Unless the ghost um, himself could be tricked or could be conned. Is that, what you're, is that the direction you're kind of going in? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, no, I was kind of, when I was, when I wrote that, I was kind of thinking, like, you know how, like, sometimes for, like, thieves or burglars, mm -hmm. though they've done, like, you know, it's a bad thing later on in life, those skills kind of help them out to get out of situations, you know, sure. for, like, a good thing. So I was thinking something like that, like, um, there's got to be some kind of skills, like, where they can, like, yeah, I don't know, maybe find a way to... I still gotta think about that one. Um, yeah, maybe maybe think about how can the particular skills that you've chosen, how can that actually be something that can get them out of the situation? Normally, we wouldn't really expect okay. you to be able to con a ghost, but maybe in your world you can. Like maybe it's the ghost of um, a uh, like um, I'm, I have no idea actually. Now that I start to like talk, a car, but like a car salesman or something. <laughs> sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. That's kind of funny. Um, or it's like a super old decrepit ghost. That's very you know how older people are sometimes easier to trick or to to um to you know con artists target them specifically so maybe they're like oh right. now we have to like use our skills against this old ghost or maybe they maybe there's people that's keeping them there and they need to use their con skills against the people more than the ghost themselves but maybe just be thinking like because right now i can't quite see the movie i, I can see up until yeah. the ghosts show up and then i'm like wait but then they're just running away the, what, like a, a con artist would just run away at that point unless there's some way that their skills could actually get them out of this situation um, so it's a good, yeah. you have some good elements here, definitely. And I want to see, I'm curious as to how the, those skills could apply. I think you just need to make it clearer how they do apply in the log line. Okay, got it. Cool. So those two major things, everything else, you, you're pretty much good. I mean, this is like good, a good comedy premise and could be a very high concept idea. Um, just give us a really great main character with some relevant trait to this that we can sort of start to see their journey implied in the log line. You don't need to spell out the whole internal journey you don't need to say and he learns the theme that stealing is wrong um but maybe you can sort of imply that you know like a repentant con artist or a reluctant con artist or something like that they're being tested and now they have to sort of think do i want to be a con artist for the rest of my life or not we, we want to sort of suggest the trajectory that the character is taking you don't have to know it super well the situation is the most important thing so focus on really concrete clear main character and um yeah. show us how these skills are going to be relevant for getting them out of this problem had it. Thank you. Thank you. Highlight how skills will be relevant to solving problems. Okay. All right. Let's um let's do more. We have plenty more to choose from. It looks like. Thank you for sharing these guys. Um, and also check the chat because as we're going through these, many people will give you ideas, so you can always scroll back up and you might see some suggestions here. Nacho says, maybe the con man needs to con the ghost to find out where they hid the treasure or something when the ghost was alive. That could work. That could make sense. So, yeah, feel free to weigh in on these in the chat, and um, everybody should ma um, make sure to check it and scroll up and see what suggestions you've been given. All right, um, let's look at the next one. We have Amber with uh, Drama. Go ahead, and um, why don't you tell us about this one? Hello. Um, it, so it's untitled as of right now. Um it's, uh, uh, the, <laughs> the logline is, a tenacious filmmaker is ready to move forward on her film until she needs permission to use her father's likeness, a heavy task considering they haven't spoken in 15 years, and she would love to keep it that way. And she would love to keep it that way. Okay. Um, cool. Thanks for this. Let me make sure I understand. So drama, and we'll just call it untitled. Yeah. A tenacious filmmaker is ready to move forward on her film. Let me move out of the way of the screen is ready to move forward on her film until she's told she needs permission to use her father's likeness. You mean like his life rights? Yeah. Okay. So likeness would be for like a cartoon or for like um, a video game or something like that. Normally, if you're trying to get the rights to somebody's life story, then we, we call yeah. that life rights in terms of screenwriting. Okay. Um, but I think I see what you mean. So she wants to make a movie about his life? Yes. Okay. A heavy task considering they haven't spoken in 15 years and she would love to keep it that way. Okay, great. So they're estranged. Yes. And her goal is... Well, it says she'd love to keep it that way, but I assume she has to confront him in order to make this happen. And like, right? this means she has to confront him. Right, okay. So let's rephrase things um, uh, a little bit. So we'll find what is the inciting incident of the film. Maybe we can think of like 
is is her is it like her script getting green lit is that the inciting incident or like what what event would you think kicks this off it's okay if you don't know you can say i'm not sure if you don't know yeah i'm not really sure i i feel like it would be the 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 film getting green lit okay with the fiat that we just need that that piece of paper signed <laughs> like, so l- let me ask this is it a film about her life or is it a film about her father's life because a film about her father's life would definitely include her in it right yes well yes um that, so in the film as you get into it you you find out there's a reason why she's not in it as much hmm okay or wouldn't be in it but so I'm guessing so let let me just write out a sample you don't have to use any of these things but let me just give you an example of what this might look like so it might say something like when her provocative new autobiographical auto autobiographical her provocative can I not spell the word autobiographical film um, is greenlit a um, tenacious filmmaker must reconnect with her estranged father um, to and so we framing a whole movie around convincing someone to do something is a little bit tricky I think that it's it makes a little more sense in a in a in a drama um, than it does in other genres. Definitely, it helps though if we can imply the movie is going to be more than just people talking in rooms. So, like, does she go yeah. to stay with him? Does she go to like visit him, or like, so, does she? Do they go on a trip together? Can you help us out with like what are we watching people do besides just sit around and talk? Right. So she's going to she's going to visit him, um, and it would be during a. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? A family reunion. Oh, great. Um, yeah. Okay, so must reconnect with her estranged father um, and uh, to convince him to give over his life rights. Something like that. Um, I think that if... Must, must reconnect is a nice way to put that. I'm not sure... Like, the reunion is, will be a nice plot element. I'm not sure we definitely need to include that in the logline, unless that's going to be yeah. a big part of the story. Like, all the families here, and they're all together Um, yeah if it is though that that might be something you'll include so i would think of frame phrasing it in one sentence uh, a little bit more like this go ahead and this is like super new right now um it's as if as far as an idea um there are a lot of elements that may or may not end up in this sure um because the earlier idea was that um she was convinced to come by a sister to see him before he was dying. There's a lot of things. So, okay. um, <laughs> so I'm still working on it, but this is kind of the latest iteration of, of what's possible with more action in it. Yeah, no, I, I like it. Um, and I think that, uh, especially cause this suggests that they, she had a very difficult upbringing or maybe he was even abusive perhaps. That does suggest I can start to see the movie because I mean she's gonna he's gonna be like well can I see the script first right and then he's gonna be like it didn't really happen like that and she's gonna be like yes it did and they're gonna have to like she's gonna have to get people on her side members of her family to corroborate to be like yes it did happen like that um, so yeah. I can I can see a lot of conflict here try to phrase this in one um, one sentence like this and also the fact that it's an autobiographical film like it's a it's about them that seems important and especially if it's gonna be it's like an unflattering portrait of him I imagine right. Yeah. Okay. So this is um so you've done a nice job of connecting the external journey and the internal journey, which is the external goal is give him to convince him to give up his or to sign over the rights to his life, and the internal journey is they need to reconnect and um in or, like in order for him to give that over, they need to be on better terms. Um, yeah. So we're gonna want to highlight that as much as you can. I think that the uh um the basics are definitely here. So try to maybe rephrase it a bit along these lines and just be as concrete and specific as you can. Okay. Um, and anything else? I guess not. Um, if it were any other genre, I'd be like, well, what are we watching people do a little bit more? But I think I pretty much... You, the fact that you told us it's a reunion, that's really helpful. Yeah. And that gives us a whole cast of characters. And this could even be sort of a single location film if you if you wanted it to be. Something along the lines yeah. of, was it called Krisha? Krisha? There's a movie with that title that I would probably look yeah. into. If you're looking to write something like this, I believe that was, um, gosh, who was the filmmaker? Somebody should look that up. But uh, so- somewhat of a similar kind of like really contained drama with the uh, like estranged family member uh, or estranged parent 
kind of relationship. Yeah, I was thinking because like, um, I was thinking because I there's always kind of there I, I find comedy in a lot of f- family dramas. So I was mm-hmm. thinking of also August of Osage County. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Good comps, yeah. Okay, um, so this is mostly working. Yeah, just try to um, uh, be make sp- sure. Yeah, be specific. Make sure we understand what exactly the conflict is. Like the fact that. This is going to be a negative picture of him, so she's going to have... In order to get him to agree to this, she's going to have to dredge up a lot of stuff from their past, and they're going to have to work through a lot of old issues. Yeah. Okay, any questions on this? For me, no. That makes total sense. Great. All right, thanks for sharing. And, um, Thank you. Check the, uh, check the comments. Nacho has some suggestions for you in the chat, so just scroll up a little bit there. Okay, we'll do. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, doke. We, we've got um, 25 minutes. I think we've got a few more to get through. We should have time. We have Smash Guy, and we have 99 Square. Okay, great. That'll probably be just enough time for everybody. Let's start with Smash Guy. We'll do Flutter. Are you with us? Yeah, sorry, just trying to find my mute button. You're good. Do you want to read this out for us? Yeah, so I have, um, you know, I have Flutter, which the genre I'm going for is Adventure Kids and Family. Mm-hmm. And the log line I put down is Determined to prove his self worth, an impractical butterfly sets off to find a new source of energy as a power hungry murder hornet grows closer to changing his home's way of life forever. <laughs> okay power hungry murder hornet that's pretty funny so this is sort of like a bug's life or ants or like those kind of like dreamworks bug adventure kind yeah. of movies yeah basically yeah essentially one of those oh. types okay i'm with you um a, a, an impractical butterfly that's unique i wonder if i know what it means let, let me read the whole thing one more time um sets off to find a new source of energy did they have a source of energy a lot of it would be, um, I, I guess, I wasn't sure if I could fit it all into a log line, but a lot of it would be like an ongoing drought, and every every flower in the area has uh, has dried out. Um, it's got a lot of Moana vibes, or how would I put it? I guess that's a good comparison. It would be, well, I've taken a lot from like Moana and. In but so when we garden. say source of energy, do you mean they have electricity in their butterfly colony? Or what do you mean exactly? No, it's more like a food source. Oh, a food source. Oh, okay. So when you say source of energy, I think like a new fusion generator or something like they have a sci-fi kind of technology available to them. That's not what you're saying? No, it's not. Okay. okay. So so new food sources is, is, the, is a much better way of explaining that, I think. Okay. Uh, so new source of food new food source um as a power hungry murder hornet goes grows closer to changing his home's way of life is just pretty non-specific so can you be more specific with the stakes what's the hornet going to actually do um she's looking to she's looking to be um the heir to the throne of this particular group of um of insects just based on previous accomplishments and uh if that makes sense of course the hornet's trying to take over the kingdom yes okay and to what end like to sort of become a dictator or like to become a sort of totalitarian villain yeah you know essentially okay so in that case i would just be specific to the last resort kind of deal um if that makes sense. I see. So in that case, I would um, just clarify a little bit. It doesn't have to be exactly this, but as a power-hungry murder hornet grows closer to usurping the butterfly's father's throne or something like that, I'm not sure exactly what his role is in their colony, but we just want to be clear. Like Just changing the our way of life it doesn't feel very scary or impactful, um, but taking over the kingdom or eradicating the butterflies or something like that, chopping down the hive, whatever. I, butterflies don't live in a hive. What am I saying? Um, where do butterflies live? Do they have a kind of colony? Um, I've been referring to it as a collection, but that's more or less like, you know, how, you know, the um, you'll have pictures and they'll be like pinned insects onto it. 
So that's usually referred to as a collection, but right. But butterflies don't really I, have I've a kind of hive, hive structure. Colony. Right. Yeah, I've, I've been hesitant on using the term colony, and I I think there's a specific thing they have. But it doesn't make sense. I don't want it to come off as not making sense. Cause That's it's very, okay. Uh... Oh, apparently a group of butterflies is called a kaleidoscope. That's weird. Yeah. Um... <laughs> That's it. That was it. Okay. Um, well, I no, was yeah. really hesitant on using that word. No one's because... going to know what that means for sure. Yeah. Right. Oh, some people say swarm. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, okay. So I think I see the very basics. But can I ask, what exactly does he have to... So he's, he, you say he sets off to find a new food source. So what's his objective? Do they actually know what the objective is? Or is he just wandering out in the wilderness trying to find something? Um, He's determined to find what is... Well, this fabled mirage that is that is known as the Sea of the Sun. Which okay. is supposed to have resilient flowers um, that can pretty much thrive in, you know, all seasons. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, so finding if, that like, and like utilizing that uh, right or meadow that sounds cool um so sets out to find uh you know a, a legendary pasture of new of like flowers that will be a great new food source for them i don't know exactly how to phrase this but maybe just instead of just saying sets off if you give us a clearer sense of where they're going you know like we say frodo the hobbit is going across the entire world to throw a ring into the biggest volcano in the whole world, right? We don't just say he sets off to save Middle Earth. That would just be a little bit... We just wouldn't have a good sense of the trajectory of his journey. So okay. if this is going to be... This is like a fantasy quest type story, right? So this is like a travel-based story where they go to different you know, landmarks along the way, uh, gathering a team of different bugs, probably, I'm guessing? Um, not so much a team. Definitely meet someone along the way. Um... Oh, who does, whom does he meet along the way? Well, he'll come across a praying mantis okay. who, who aids him in his journey, and then a lot of, uh, I think they get, they find them, so he finds himself in a shady port town full of rats. Okay. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of, like... That's cool. Any any particular danger that an insect would have in, like, a more southern U.S. type environment like estuary type environments okay cool um so yeah just i would again get a little more concrete and specific so we want to know what the villain is going to do we want to know what exactly your main character is setting out to accomplish or sort of like give us a sense of what what we're going to be watching him what terrain we're going to be watching him traverse or what is he trying to find like this fabled meadow or this legendary pasture i think might be a nice way to put that and then if there is a central relationship there like a central team up with the praying mantis and that's like the center point of the story then that should definitely come up in the logline. If it's not as central, you may not need to mention it, considering there's already a lot going on here. Um, but I think mm -hmm. just focusing on these couple things will be helpful. And maybe pick a different word besides impractical. Do you mean he's kind of like head in the clouds, like dr like a dreamer? Or what do you mean exactly by impractical here? So I had stargazing. Um, but impractical is he's not very, you know, he's not as uh, specific or by the book compared to others like uh you know he he will chart you know one of the character things in my initial draft was he would um he'd, he'd do more nocturnal based activities like he would chart stars and he's into uh astrology that type of stuff mm -hmm. um but that's not something you know butterflies don't stay up at night that's more moth stuff right i think so um so it's um but so maybe find out what exactly you're getting at with the word impractical. Does it mean he's naive? Does it mean he's, you know, headed in the clouds? Um, does it mean... Inexperienced was another word I was considering. It's just that the, I know in particular this, you know, the adjective has been really hard. Like that word, um, that has been probably the most difficult part in, in nailing the log line. Um, okay. Well, you can always, since it's just one word and... and... I think you know what you're going for, even if you can't find exactly the right expression of it. it means that you can always find it down the line and and swap it in once you find it. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe maybe just think, keep thinking of what what specifically you'll want to uh, be saying here with the word impractical. I think people don't exactly know what a practical butterfly is. Do you know what I mean? Unless unless they, because what about? I'm not even exactly sure what butterflies get up to most of the time. Um, but in a world where they're all essentially fantasy characters, then 
I could see maybe you're referring to his tact, but his like um, the way he solves problems and the way he approaches, uh, you know, sol- resolving conflicts and things. Maybe has this sort of naive yeah, I mean, worldview. Might also fit into this, but I think part of the character's journey is really the the inexperience on his end. Uh, mm-hmm. He's persistent, but he doesn't know fully what is really out there. I see. Um, but I see. he knows it's you know. Unlike others, he knows he um, this is something he wants accomplished. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, maybe you'll have to fiddle with that adjective a little bit, but um, as for the the rest of it, just be specific. Clarify those stakes and the objective. Would I need to be specific on location names or just... Um... Not unless it's going to be a really big part of the movie. Like Rango, for instance, it's about a lizard who needs to he's trying to survive in the like the desert of the southwest right and that's like a really big part of the sort of identity and feeling of that movie um so you could think maybe if we want to clarify he's going on a journey across the florida panhandle or he's going on a journey through the everglades or something like that that would be really good to include but if it's sort of a made-up kind of fantasy animated kingdom then it doesn't quite matter as much i would suggest trying it out okay uh, i'll take a look at that log line as well because um that's a good point so um nacho has left something in the comments here uh which might help as well he says something like after his village runs out of food or something like that as the inciting incident that he that's a good point nacho if we highlight the the reason that he needs to go on this quest the inciting incident would be something like when their food source is threatened or when they run out of food um an adjective butterfly embarks on an epic journey in search of new flowers before a power hungry murder hornet enslaves the butterflies starves the people usurps the throne something like that um that's in the in the classroom chat so feel free to take a look if you want to draw some ideas from that and thank you for sharing any last questions on this one this is a draft you've already written right yep cool okay so you'll be doing a rewrite in the class yeah great okay looking forward to um hearing more from this one hope this helps um and the fact that you already have a draft means that it'll be easier to rework the logline because you already know the basics of the story now you're just trying to find the best possible version of this one sentence yeah exactly thank you for sharing i think we have one more and uh let's check or maybe two more i'll see if we can do both let me find our first one. Okay, I heard it too from 99 Square. Go ahead. Can you read this out for us, please, Square? Mm-hmm. Uh, after an impersonating monster comes after a bickering mother-daughter duo, they must set aside their differences to give themselves the best chance of survival. All right. Thanks for that. So this is based on the creepy pasta, I, I imagine, where... Uh, of course. This is a very, yeah, very common sort of uh, horror trope here. Um, impersonating is probably not the right idea. We would probably say shapeshifting for the most part. Um, impersonate. I think we understand what that by saying shapeshifting, we will get the idea that it can become actual people as well. Right. Um, after a shapeshifting monster comes after a bickering mother daughter duo. Well, a mother daughter duo. Aren't all mothers and daughters a duo sort of? Uh, like, so. I mean, I guess that's that's just <laughs> how. My brain formulated the sentence. You know, I, I see so. what you. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, but uh, who's the main character here? Let me ask that. Uh, the daughter. Okay. So bring the main character to the forefront. Mm-hmm. So a, uh, you know, adjective, whatever, teenager or was she a teenager? Or how old is the character? Uh, yeah, she's a teenager. Okay. So find an adjective to describe that um after an xxs teenager she must well let me see so set aside their differences to give themselves the best chance of survival well we could probably assume that of almost any survival situation so i think we're going to want to know why is why specifically these characters right like what does she actually have to do in order to defeat the monster does the monster impersonate her mother and try to take over the mom's life like Coraline sort of thing or how, what exactly is going on can you maybe just tell us a bit more about the story um, well, I was just thinking about that more in the beginning of, like, it starts out as the monster impersonating her mother, and then, but it's like, they just have a bad relationship, mm-hmm. and they are, like, just forced in the situation together, 
and like just forced to confront all their problems and by the end when they like reconcile is when they're finally able to defeat the monster okay what does the monster want to do um that's a great question uh i have like come up with motivations for the monster but it like i imagine that it feels kind of corny but like it used to be a human or something and it is like lost its daughter so it's just that's why it's going after all the mothers so it can take their daughters or something you know so is it Um, trying to kidnap the kid or is it trying to take over the mom's life and be the new mom uh i would say kidnap i mean i don't know like i feel like the both of those you know well but you can't do both of those can you as the second she takes the kid away from the house you're no longer gonna think it's your mom So maybe just think a little more about, because, like, we can't quite know what the stakes are unless we know what the monster's trying to do. If it's trying to kill them, that's, I mean, that's easy to to understand, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And if, so if, if if the daughter now is forced to sort of save her mom's life from this monster that's trying to kill her, I think maybe there's the movie, maybe that's the movie there, right? Because if you're saying they need to put aside their differences, and and so, like, imagine you have a, uh, this is almost kind of like, uh, uh, like fairy tale style storytelling, kind of like Coraline or Labyrinth or something like that, right? Like you get in a big fight with your mom and you're just like, I wish she would just go away sometimes. I wish she would be replaced by somebody else. Then yeah. the monster shows up and it actually tries to do that. It's like, I'll be your mom. Let's kill the old one. And now the girl right. is forced to actually save her estranged, or not, they may not be estranged, but they're not getting along well, whatever. She's forced to go out of her way to protect and save her mom from this thing. Do you see how that might actually give us a clearer shape of the story? Yeah. Okay. So maybe think along those lines. So we want to clarify what does the monster actually want to do, in which case we're going to learn what the stakes really are. And that's going to help us understand what we're doing over the course of the story. Like if the girl, ha- I can sort of see it. If the girl is like, um, has to sort of um, placate this imposter mom and like pretend like she's helping her search the house for the real mom and pretending like she's going to help her kill it. So she has to trick the creature into thinking, okay, I'll be your new daughter. Sure, that's fine. But really needs to find a way out of the situation. I can see a very good, maybe even very completely contained, very tense horror story based off that setup. You don't have to do that, but that's just me sort of taking what you have here and thinking, how could this really work as a feature based on, or just like in the logline format? Um, So yeah, maybe think, what does the villain want? Um, What, uh, and that's going to, that's going to help us understand what the main character has to do in order to get away. It's not just putting their differences aside, which is sort of an internal or relationship kind of base goal. And we can imagine almost any survival scenario you're going to need to put your put your differences aside with somebody. But if it's like, I have a big fight with my mom, and now I need to save her from the monster, I totally see it. So um, maybe consider that and use, use from that whatever you want. All righty. Any questions on this? Uh, I don't have any. I think I uh, understand pretty well. Cool. Thanks for sharing. This sounds cool. I would definitely watch this. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We got one more. I think, right? Uh, I think maybe somebody posted an extra yep. one. Okay. Um, so two, we'll do- two more. Oh, two more. Okay. I'll, I'll make time to do both. Um, let's start with Robert's Incarnate Quantum War. Okay. So the log line is a brilliant military scientist. Oh, are you just going to copy paste? Oh, yeah, I'm going to mark it up on here. You can read it up. A brilliant military scientist believes the sole survivor of countless battles is the key to winning a hopeless war. But they will have to escape a pursuing cyborg army before starting a last-ditched project to save the world. All right. Thanks for that. So, sci-fi movie, a brilliant military scientist believes the sole survivor of countless battles is the key to winning a hopeless war. Okay. But they will have to... Who's they? Both of uh, them? The scientist and that soldier. Oh, okay. So they have to team up, basically. They will have to escape a pursuing cyborg army before starting a last-ditch project to save the world. Hmm. This is... I mean, I'm intrigued by the big ideas of this, but it's a little bit too big at the moment. I, I'm having trouble actually figuring out what some of these things mean and what's going on here. Let me maybe ask a couple questions. So, you say the sole survivor of countless battles. Battles from, between whom? Battle against whom? Uh, there's a opposing force called the Transcenders. It takes place in the future. The Transcenders are synthetic humans, basically. They've they transitioned from being normal people to uploading their minds into computers. 
Oh, so okay. They want to wipe out uh, biological life that refuses to be uploaded. Okay, so this is the cyborg army that you were talking about. Right. It is, okay. So we want to bring this up a little bit earlier because if we add it, if we say they have to escape a pursuing cyborg army, I don't understand the connection to the first part of the logline here. So with a big world building sci-fi like this, we need to be um, just careful how we define and explain things. So we might want to say something like, um, let me see. So the scientist believes that the survivor of these battles is the key to winning a war. So the the inciting incident is the scientist teams up with the soldier. Pretty or much, recru yeah. recruits she, the soldier. She, yeah, she's just trying to get him back to their their main facility because he's in like a forward field hospital mm -hmm. after one of these battles, and so she goes to interview him and see if he's suitable for this project that they have an idea for. Okay, and do they think he has superpowers or something? Why do they think he's going to be the one to save the world? Uh, because he's he's been the sole survivor of many battles, so they just kind of assume like, well. There's something that he has like an X factor. They don't know what it is, but they figure he's already, it's kind of like he's been battle proven already. Mm -hmm. So she gets sent out to investigate like, well, is this guy like super good at combat? Is he a sociopath and doesn't feel stress or like what, what exactly is going on with him? Mm -hmm. um, but, hey, can I, can I she, ask? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. The doctor just assumes that, uh, his performance in battle and always surviving is proof enough that he is the person that they're gonna need. Okay, and is the scientist the main character would, more, would you say, or is the soldier more the main character? A little bit more on his end. Oh, uh, his end. She's a very strong character as well. They're uh, they're pretty much like, I don't know, like John Connor and Sarah Connor. They're both pretty important characters, you know. Right, right, but um, but in the first movie, Sarah's the main character, and in the second movie, John's the main character. So we should maybe frame it a little bit more from his perspective if he's going to be your sort of central protagonist. So in this case, we could say the sole survivor of countless um, battles against an evil cyborg army. Start it like that. Something like that. Oh, did I spell evil Borg? Evil Borg. Maybe that could be a... Some, somebody make an action figure called Evil Borgs. Um, after a against a cyborg army, um, uh, something like this. Maybe frame it a bit more in terms of the protagonist first. So frame soldier as protagonist up front. Um, is recruited by a military scientist. And he must, and so we're going to want to make it seem as active as possible. So something like, and he must escort her, or he must pr defend her, protect her, whatever it is. As they, what are they? Are they trying to get away from the army? So I would maybe give us a sense of the goalpost, right? So are they trying to cross an ocean? Are they trying to get across a border? Are they trying to, um, maybe, you, maybe, uh, just um, if you can give us a clear sense of the where they're going, what the objective is. Um, yeah, they're just trying to return back to. I guess like their rearward positions that aren't so close to the enemy because once the enemy discovers that she's that close to the front and he's there, they know who he is too because they've, you know, it's like, you know, it's futuristic. So the computers are all networked and they've seen him in battle and they know he keeps escaping. So they really want to capture him and her and upload both of them so that they'll have all of his, what whatever makes him special, they can put into their machines. Okay. And uh, all the military secrets that she knows due to her position can also be uploaded. So they're just trying to get away, get get to a safe zone, you know, wherever that is. Okay, cool. So in that case, I think you might... And, and it, does he need her? Like, why is she so important? She's the um, head of research for military weaponry and stuff like that. So, But if, if she they, died, if would could, humanity be screwed? If she died? Yeah. Um, she, she's just a very important person, basically, where it would accelerate the defeat that they're facing. Okay. I guess I wasn't quite grasping why he needs her. If he's the sort of super soldier guy, and if she dies, can't he still save the world without her? No, so, so the no. plan in the story is, her, her plan is, well, so, so the Transcenders, they have their greatest soldier, and they just copy him and, and download him onto these fighting machines. So she wants to clone this guy 
So oh. She's going to lead the project to do that. So oh, okay. She's the head of that, that particular project. Okay, so she has, like, a plan to use him, and she's the only one that can save humanity by using him? Yeah, something like that. Uh, okay, okay. So you might want to clarify that a little bit. Um, the... Uh, yeah, so I would maybe think a little more like this. The sole survivor of countless battles against a cyborg army must escort a military scientist to their home base before or else blank, blank, blank. The cyborgs destroy all of humanity. Are they trying to kill all the people, I'm guessing? Yeah, upload them or kill them, one of the two. Okay, so I'll say like something like before a malicious AI um, absorbs all of humanity. You don't have to use that, but that's just an example of what this logline might sort of look like. Um... And uh, escort the scientists to the home base. You might, like, don't use this exact thing. You might want to just clarify why we're doing that. But, yeah, try to lay it out in one sentence, framing it a little bit more around the main character here. Um, and make sure we know what we're up against before we start adding in elements. Like, if you're going to mention a cyborg army, we have to understand he was the survivor of battles against that army before we know what's going on, really. So something a little bit more like this. I can copy and paste this into the... This is not perfect, but I'll paste this into the chat for you. Um, and maybe just just go from here. All right, thank you. Any questions on this? Does this make sense? How you can kind of I, I now that you've explained it, I, I am starting to see the story a bit more. It was just the way it was laid out it was sort of um, introducing new elements halfway through the first sentence. So do you see? I, I was getting a little confused by just the presentation of it, but I think I, I'm seeing it now that you explain it. Do you have any? Did this make sense? Yeah, I'll I'll keep working on it. Cool, cool. Thanks for this. Okay, um, we have one more, then I'll stop for last um, questions before we wrap up. I know we're a little bit over time. Um, let's do uh, Student 01 with Animal Story. Hi, uh, so the storyline is not fully developed, but uh, I, this is just a part that I, that I can caught uh, while, while you guys are talking. That's fine. Yeah, can you read it for us? Yeah, uh, yes. Um, so... Uh, conflict between people and wild animals. When the train transporting the wild animals from a deep forest got into an accident, and most animals die, and some survive and escape, and cause chaos in the nearby villages. As the story develops, people treat and exploit those animals more cruel than uh, the damage or threat from the animals. It makes the point that the people are more dangerous than those wild animals. Okay. So, Go ahead. So there is no... Um, uh, specific hero in this uh, uh, um, in this plot, but basically it's a uh, group between the animals and people. So how the there there are uh, 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 some some animals like animals can be sometimes compassionate and uh, the, the people can be more cruel uh, to animals. So that's the point uh, that the story outlines. Mm -hmm. um, uh, basically, the, the plot is like uh, somewhere. For jungle, maybe African uh, forest. So they want to transport animals uh, to uh, zoos all over the world, and uh, that that tree got uh, uh, due to an accident and uh, caused a lot of chaos uh, in the nearby uh, uh, villages in the in that uh, forest close by. So uh, and the, the, how the story develops and what the business people want that are transporting animals uh, want and uh, uh, so there is a conflict between three uh, three entities. One is the the villagers in the, in the, in the forest and, uh, and the animals and the, the business people who want to transport those animals. So how the dynamics happen and uh, uh, so in the end, the animals look much better than the people. That's what. The, Plot. Okay. I don't. Have, yeah, that's not a story develop, but uh, that's. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, you don't need to have all the answers right now. Um, but so for the purposes of a logline, you don't really need to tell us like the themes of the story. We don't need to go on to suggest the point that it's going to make. I think that we just need to say what's happening in the story. So I would lose this last line here, and I would reframe this sort of like when a zoo train derails in. What, did you say it was rural India? Uh, India or Africa, yeah, both are fine. Okay, so you'll have to pick your location. Um, so I'll yeah. just give you an example. So when a zoo train derails, great intro, and I love this premise. Let me just ask, are these talking animals? Like, are we, or are we doing human? Uh, no, it's no. wild animals. So it is it's people, real people, and real animals. Oh, okay. So I think you're going to, you definitely do need to find a human main character. The movie can have VFX, but 
that the outline is like a piece of yeah. 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 Okay. So you're going to need to find a character to frame this logline around. I, I know you said there's a lot of characters, and that's okay. But for a logline, we need to focus on somebody. So I'm just going to pick a random example. You don't have to use this, but we might say something like, you know, um, who who might the hero be? It might be, a, uh, we could say, it's like a, a young zookeeper, or we could say, um, I, I th- go ahead. I think uh, I thought about it. Maybe the the uh, train driver itself can be oh, sure. heroes, but he, he causes the problem. Uh, and, uh, somehow he regrets it and somehow try, tries to be uh, let by as much as he can. So. Okay, sure. So um, I'm going to just pick a random trait for this guy. You don't have to use this, but we might say something like an animal-hating uh, train driver um, must, you know, organize uh, the survivors and lead the group of, you know, humans and zoo animals to safety. Something like that. You don't have to use that. I'm just picking animal hate. Like if we say he hates animals, then we can clearly see this will be the journey of him coming to understand why animals are important, or that people are worse than animals, like you were saying. So you don't you don't have to use that exact thing, but we're just trying to pick an adjective that is going to suggest a journey for the character. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I'm thinking mostly of a lazy train driver. So basically, because of this recklessness, so it happens. Oh, so reckless. Uh, he just lazy at his job. So. so, but he caused the accident. Yeah, he some, did. Somehow, okay. Of his, uh, Okay, we might even want to include that in the inciting incident too then because that's going to lead to a sense of responsibility for him to fix the problem, wouldn't you say? Yeah. So when he accidentally derails his zoo train in the rural Indian wilderness might be a better place to start here. A reckless train driver must, we might say, organize the survivors and lead the group if he's going to be like a leadership position or maybe it's just going to be he needs to survive. Um, But... Uh, this your comps might be something like. Have you seen Life of Pi? Yeah, yeah. So I was the, I was imagining that, but um, this is uh, yeah. No. But they, they try to coexist among those uh, situations in a boat. But uh, this one is like a, there are three aspects. One is a business side of things, like a, the, the the zoo company or mm-hmm. is buying those. They have their own interests. Uh, they don't care much about uh, certain aspects. Uh, so the, in the middle of this uh, train driver, uh, the guilt and uh, try to make it a better. So, I see. Uh, I see. Okay. So yeah, those are all going to be implied in the in the logline. So I'm, I'm just going to copy and paste this to you. You can modify this however you want. You don't have to use this. I'm just going to put it in the chat so you can copy and paste it to your own document and change it as you like from there. Sure. And yeah, let's try to make it one sentence. Just focus on the plot. Like when inciting incident, an adjective protagonist must conflict or else stakes. Um, and the stakes here are they need to survive. So it's life and death. Um, you say, this is this feels like an action adventure story. I might, I might describe the genre as action adventure. Okay. Thank um, you. Sounds cool, though. I'd love to read this. Thank you for sharing. Okay, we're at the end of the class. Thank you all so much for being here this whole time. I'm going to open the floor just to ask questions about anything we've talked about today before we um, close things out. So anything you guys would still like to know, anything about script camp or about the process or about screenwriting, the floor is open. What would you guys like to know? I, uh, I'm having like a, a bit of an issue, I guess, trying to organize this story into like a log line. Okay. Um, I was wondering if you, you could send that thing that's like, um, that uh, kind of tells you how to make one. Oh, was like, sure. I can go back to the template if that's what you're talking about. Um, and um, as I'm bringing this up, just so everybody knows, you can vote yes on our poll in the chat. So go into the chat. You should see a small poll where you can click the blue numbers. Um, if you're intending on signing up, but you haven't done so so far, you can um, click that number one, and you can get instant access to all of our chat channels. Um, it won't make you—you you won't have to pay anything right away. That's just your intention to sign up. So feel free to click there if you plan to join but have not yet done so. Okay, so um, this is for Paul. Here's the uh, the template for loglines. Or did you did you mean you had a logline you wanted to work on right now? 
we're up 10 minutes over time, but I'm glad to do that in the in either in the chat channels over the next couple days, or you could bring it to the upcoming lab. Uh, yeah, I just I, I, I like I'm having trouble like I guess ordering or, or like putting in order the story in my brain in like a way that fits something like that. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know, it's um, read it out loud if you've got yeah, a log line uh, to read. Uh, I don't I don't have one yet. Oh, you don't have one yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm having like a bit of problem with uh, just like figuring out how to fit it into that. Okay. Um why don't you make a uh, either send me a message or an email or make a post on one of our chat channels and I can look at it later today. Okay, yeah. That'd be fine. I'd be glad to do that. Thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you. Other questions about um script camp, the upcoming uh boot camps or any of our classes or the process or anything like this so just a quick question for the 29 a month is you're just being charged 29 a month for the year or is it a cumulative like the 40 percent off or one like if you pay for the yearly subscription up front it, yeah, you if you get the yearly, you get it all up front, but it is saving forty percent on the price if you ha then o over if you had paid it monthly. Got it. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? If not, we'll say thank you so much for coming. Check out these other great classes or fantasy uh, club today at five in this server. We also have table reads coming up at two. Um, so two other events just in script camp today. Um, and uh, we're going to be having um, plenty of other events coming up. So check out those other servers, script camp, word camp, film camp, creator camp, tune camp, code camp, and lingo camp for plenty more coming up. So your membership gets you access to all of those things, every event on all of those servers. Um, thank you guys. We're looking forward to seeing you more. Remember to keep working on your log lines and to come back for week one, which is on January 8th. So that's in about a month. So you have plenty of time to get those basics down. We'll, we're glad to answer any more questions that you have in the meantime in our many chat um, channels on the server um, and give you more feedback or help you shape it more. Um, and we'd love to see you around the server soon. So thanks so much for coming. We'll call it now and we'll see you guys for your next Script Camp class or event. Have a great rest of your Sunday.